Hello guys and welcome to another video. So Rick Riordan just announced more Percy Jackson casting for the Disney Plus TV show. And who is it this time? Well, we are finally getting our top three gods, which means we have the missing two of the trio, Zeus and Poseidon. I have searched his website so many times by now that I only have to click the R button on my keyboard to get to Rick Riordan. Com. So without further ado, let's see who has been cast in the role of two of the big three gods. So I've seen the post on Instagram, but I haven't actually looked at the actors. So let's see, the council is complete for now, which makes me wonder. I'm guessing it means the gods, because obviously there's no more of the big three. But let's see. Hello friends, it's been a while since I've posted, I know. We took a break for the holidays, well, I say break, but it was more of me going back to full-time book writing mode as I wrap up Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods. Shout out in the comments, who is excited for that book coming out this September or this October quite soon? Now I'm back in Vancouver. We are only days away from completing principal photography on season one of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. We typically wait to announce our cast until they are done with their filming. And since these two actors were the last major characters to appear in the season, it took a while to get to these announcements. But at last, I am delighted to introduce Zeus and Poseidon. Let's take a look at the first one, Zeus. Zeus is going to be Lance Reddick. And right from the get-go, handsome man, but I cannot place his face. So if I've seen him in anything, I don't recall. Already, already you can see hate comments for this guy, so please, if you're thinking about doing that, maybe don't. Let's see what Rick has to say. King of Olympus, god of the sky, Zeus is the Deus Optimus Maximus of the Greek pantheon, and Lance is the perfect actor to channel his personality. Lance has appeared in numerous projects, from The Wire to Law and Order to my personal favorite, Bosk, in which he plays Chief Irving in Mobile Object, to Titus Welliver's Detective Bosch, Unstoppable Force, Lance is also well known as Charon, the hotel manager in the John Wick movies. Oh, I have seen that, but if he's just the hotel manager, that's why I don't remember him. And it seems a natural promotion to go from Charon to Zeus. In all his roles, Lance projects an aura of authority and power that makes him perfect for the King of Olympus. As I told him when we met, he has so much gravitas, he could pull planets out of alignment. And when he makes his displeasure known to Percy Jackson, wow, can't wait until you see that scene. Now I can't wait either. All of these counseling announcements, at least Rick seems to love it. So if no one else likes the show, I know that at least Rick will like it. And I, honestly, I trust his judgment, at least this much. But this much. He was the one that gave us the Percy Jackson and the Olympian books after all, so we should trust him at least a little bit. Give him the benefit of the doubt, and I think this guy looks good. I mean, I don't remember him in John Wick, but if Rick says he's good, I guess he's good. If you were Zeus, king of the gods, and you could be anyone you wanted, you would definitely choose to be Lance Reddick. I... that's a funny line. I'm pretty sure he's Zeus's favorite actor in real life. I don't know if that's a compliment to this actor, to be honest. Nobody would dare mess with you, except maybe dot 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 our second casting. <laughs> when I just saw his forehead, I was like, wait, is that Ewan McGregor? So we have Toby Stevens as Poseidon. Okay, we have the lighter hair, the blue eyes. It's giving Walker Scobell. So I think the parentage casting is quite on point here. And scruffy beard, love that. One thing is that they do not look like brothers, but that doesn't really matter since golden ichor is what binds them together, there's no DNA. And also, if we take into account that Zeus is married and has a lot of children with his own sister, then genetics don't really come into play. We don't really think about it too much, so... Perfect. Let's look into this guy. An unstoppable force in his own right. Toby Stevens was riveting as John Robinson, the family patriarch in Netflix's Lost in Space. Before that, he played a different sort of sea god as Captain John Flint, the swashbuckling pirate in Black Sails. He is British acting royalty and has done everything from Shakespearean drama to playing Rochester in Jane Eyre to voicing James Bond in a series of audio dramas. He must have a really cool voice and can't wait to hear that. 
When we finally meet Poseidon towards the end of the season one, just as we do in the book, Toby is incredible on screen. When he delivered some of Poseidon's iconic lines, I got chills. And seeing him and Walker together, you can absolutely believe they are father and son. Now many actors have the sheer power to stand toe to toe with one another and convince you they are the manifestations of the sky and the sea, about to tear one another apart. Lance and Toby absolutely have that godly aura. I can't wait to see the gods fight. If they have good special effects, that's gonna look so awesome. This isn't blush, this is just me being naturally red, okay? Let's move on. We have done almost all of the photography for our eight episodes. Right now, we are just doing some pickup scenes to fill in different angles and expand some of the sequences. I have seen early director's cuts for episodes one through six and all the dailies for episodes seven and eight. So I am now confident in predicting, yeah, if you're a fan of the books, or even if you just love a good adventure, you're going to love this show. We still have months and months of post-production work to do, but the team is wrapping up in Vancouver with a sense of pride and accomplishment. That sounds good. Honestly, sounds good to me. Yesterday, I got to sit down with our three main actors, Walker, Leah, and Ariane, for a behind-the-scenes interview. Not sure when that will air or in what format, but it'll be a while. It was so great to check in with them and chat about how far they've come and to express my admiration and appreciation for how hard they've worked and how much they've grown, both literally and as actors. They have grown so much. The picture that they used to introduce us to Walker is not who Walker is nowadays, so it's mind-blowing how fast kids grow up. This concludes the casting announcements for season one. If you haven't seen a particular god or demigod announced, that's because they don't appear in the season and won't be cast until we start the subsequent seasons, which means any of those announcements are probably at least a year away. So I'm guessing we won't see Athena in the show, and when we get to Olympus, it'll be mostly empty because we don't have half of the gods. We don't have any of the female gods, do we? Because we have Dionysus, we have Hephaestus, we have Hermes, we have Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. So the only one we're missing is Apollo and all of the female goddesses. So I guess none of the female goddesses will be up there in Olympus. More later, demigods, but I am pleased to tell you we are in a very good place and we look ahead to a not yet greenlit but fully anticipated season two. This better get greenlit. I haven't seen someone, obviously. But if they go through all of this and we don't get a season two, I... I might as well just quit YouTube, you know, like, why? Why still be here? This pic- <laughs> The guy- <laughs> Just this picture. I'm loving Poseidon. He looks very Poseidon-ish. Zeus's face, just in this picture, his, like, smile and how long his body looks with that jacket is just making me laugh so much. And I don't know, maybe the fact that he's bald, but just- <laughs> Why is, he, why is he smiling like that? What does he know that I don't? Why is he smiling like that? And please let me know, is Walker Scoble really that tall? That he's almost as tall as these two grown adults? Look at his face. He looks so grown up. And he's wearing the beaded necklace with... With a ring on it? What? Wait, that's not his... <gasps> He's wearing Annabeth's necklace! Wait a damn second! I literally just zoomed and enhanced, and first of all, uh, Percy does not carry a ring on his necklace. And second of all, he shouldn't even have one bead, let alone five, which marks this as clearly Annabeth's necklace. And then he has an empty leather cord around his neck, which makes you think that he has both his own necklace and Annabeth, which makes me wonder, do they just, did they just give him this necklace so he would have it in the photo? And you're like, oh, I know that necklace. Or is this somehow related to the plot? Did I just like discover a subplot that wasn't before in the books? Or am I just making this shit up? Who knows? But I'm excited to see if any of this gets brought up once the show is out, which is in less than a year, people. Well, 2024 could be summer could be fall, could even be winter, but I'm guessing it'll be before that. So yeah, leave a like if you like this video. Comment down below if you think the necklace means something, because I think it does. Why would they give it to him? I I'm gonna stop rambling, but let me know if you think it means something. Subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell button so you get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this every single Friday on this channel, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Toby Stevens. 
Toby Stevens, <laughs> Toby Stevens, Toby Stevens was riveting as John Robinson. <laughs>